Hello and welcome back, friends, to the People's League stream. We're back for Season 4, and we have an absolutely incredible match to set the tone. The Season 3 Gold Final rematch between HL Elite and Merck on Saint marie Dumont. HL Elite was able to come out on top of that one in what was one of the best stream matches of last season, but I'm sure Merck is going to be coming out strong to avenge that loss. My name is Caparzo, and today I'm joined by familiar face Awake and newcomer to the TPL stream, Winters, of Comp Let Loose podcast fame. So welcome Winters to the crew. Winters, to get things started, these are obviously two of the best teams on, in the league facing off after an off-season's worth of practice and preparation. With the biggest change this off-season being private servers, how do you think that that's going to influence how these two teams come out of the gate? Uh, so first off, I want to say thank you for having me. I'm excited um, to be a part of this and it's excited to especially see this game. Uh, with the recent implementation of server browsers, I think what we have already seen is it's definitely helped mitigate burn times um, and be able to kind of add a little bit of flair to flipping for factions, flipping for um, who gets to who gets to host the servers. So I'm definitely excited to see it. Um, I think server browser, especially for console, is definitely going to be a game changer that I'm excited to see for the rest of the season. Oh wait, what do you what do you think about that? Oh, maybe awake is having some mic issues. So, but yeah, winners. I hundred percent agree. the The lack of burns has really, really helped uh, with this whole situation. I'm I'm so happy when when I'm knowing that the match is going to start at a certain time and we actually start near that time. Uh, that's, Absolutely. That's that's always a that's always a good feeling. But this round, we're on Saint Marie Dumont. We have uh, Merck and HLE, like we were saying, with Merck playing the allies and HLE the axis. So. We have the strat sketch push, pulled up here while we just wait for everyone to pile into the server here. Uh, what, what do you see as the most uh, important points here? Uh, so I think obviously, um, I believe I saw Pierce Farm being midpoint. Um, I think capping first is going to be huge um, for whichever team uh, is you know able to get it. I think historically, I don't know the exact numbers, but I think historically teams who cap mid first tend to go on to win that game. But it's a lot more important than just rushing for mid because teams, especially at the caliber of HLLE and Merc, that initial cap on mid doesn't mean really much because that point can get recapped as quickly as you cap it. So it's definitely going to be a lot of responsibility on the backline teams to be able to get those uh, supporting garrisons set up so you can ensure that you hold that midpoint. Yeah, I'm not sure if we've fully started yet. I know that they were having some some server issues with uh, you know that level one glitch that could sometimes happen. Uh, so I'm not sure that we're we're full go here, but uh, we'll definitely see Pierre's farm as a potential midpoint, and and that's a that's a really really tough point for both teams to kind of hold on to. So it'll be interesting to see um, you know how that goes if we do end up with Pierre's. I'm back now. Oh, welcome away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. Um... Yeah, so just looking at the map, I know uh, A Network, it's it's such a grindy of a point. I know when I was a part of LGN, we played Merc on this map as allies, um, and that match was incredible. I think that was probably one of the best games I've ever played in, even though it was, it was just a scrim. But A Network as the midpoint, if that does happen, you're going to get a lot of... A lot of RD tanks are going to be very important, especially on that point in particular, just because you do have the high ground to the western side of the point, which tanks always love to camp on. Um, what is that dugout barn? I can't really see. I... Yeah, and well, dugout, I should say. Dugout, that's... I really hope we don't get that, in my opinion. I just, I don't like playing that point no matter what type of mood I'm in. Um, <laughs> I just don't like it. It's... I did. It's, it's an all right point, but it's. Yeah. I did hear it's from weird. Hump uh, before the match, and he did want it to put on record that if it's dugout, we're fucked. So that's his words, not mine. Uh, so I think he might have similar feelings to you, uh, awake on that one. Yeah. Speaking of Merc members, me and Maspa have a little bit of a bet going on right now too. Oh. So if, if Merc wins, I have to change my name to a sleep. Uh -oh. <laughs> high stakes and, high stakes bets right now and if hle wins i get to change his name to something i haven't decided what yet okay but we'll have to see if uh 
he has any blunders this match that we can you know use to, to change his name to something like that but uh yeah that, that's a that's a good governor's bet you got going on there <laughs> oh yeah we need we need more bets this season please reach out to me <laughs> yeah wake's taking for action bets. for for bets this season so uh anyone who's trying to get strike it rich off uh the people's league and, <laughs> and these matches uh send your action awake's way he'll only take a modest percentage <laughs> i'm taking all your money <laughs> <laughs> so boys um i think we're still waiting here lots of server issues today obviously it can't just be smooth all the time with server browsers but i think i'll take it over over the burning uh to be honest with you plus we we're definitely going to get a nice sam marie dumont match up here and uh those are always a pleasure yeah uh, i i'm so happy um that we have the server browser because you know you're able to set up the map that you want and relatively start on time um i think it's definitely something that has really helped members that live in a different part of the world than the respective clan that they're playing for so like for example if you're a uh na team with eu members and you're starting at you know 7 30 eastern time it could be you know two three o'clock in the morning for the scheduled start time for a uk player and then the way that it used to be where you could potentially be burning for up to an hour, it was really pushing it for them. Um, so I think it's a huge benefit, not only to the teams as a whole, but also, as I said, to those players that live in a different region than their respective clan. And I think we're seeing a lot more weeknight scrims as well, which I, I think is a really fun change that would have never really been possible before. Uh, mm -hmm. with with not being able to guarantee that we weren't going to be, you know, burning on a work night until, you know, 12 o'clock and then you just end up scrapping it. I think that's, uh, I don't think anyone would want, it, want that to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was one thing that we, I think a lot of people ran into issue. I know when 7th was a thing, rip, uh, and against <laughs> HLE last season that we ended up having to cancel the, like, the match because... Obviously, you know, it's like playing against an EU team as an NA team, like time zone differences do matter. And I think they were up at like, what, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night when we were still burning. So obviously the server browser eliminates that fact. And obviously like the randomness is kind of gone, but I think the preset matches are a nice thing to have, especially like teams prepping and all that jazz. Yeah, I think preparation will be a big part of um, of this match. The teams didn't know their faction until 48 hours ago, but they did know that the map was going to be San Marie Dumont, I believe, since the beginning of the week. So um, I'm sure these two teams, you know, as talented and dedicated as they are to the game, have been practicing San Marie Dumont from both perspectives. And then since 48 hours ago, I'm sure they've been practicing you know, their respective teams. So... That sort of preparation is something I always enjoy, uh, especially when you can see it pay off like in that first three minutes. It's so practicable, so uh, I'm sure these two teams are going to be uh, really, really well versed on their openers. Right, and uh, you know what? We're, we're actually joined by Hercules now, founder of uh, the People's League, who's uh, popped in as well for in the booth. So welcome, Hercules. This is uh, I know you've been listening to that question, but uh, Sam Marie Dumont, what do you think? Uh, welcome to the broadcast. Well, I have always been a huge fan of St. Marie Dumont. It's one of my favorite maps. Um, I think it's one of the most balanced maps. Uh, it's definitely a lot of room for m small adjustments from the teams that can make major impact on the, um, the way the game plays out. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I I have had so many good matches on uh, AA these last couple months with uh, since server browser on Thursdays. The good amount of North American uh, players all get together on like a Thursday night for a sweaty mix match, and we try to pick as even of midpoints as you can, just to try to like guarantee that we have a solid match. And AA, we we had like two matches uh, a couple weeks apart on that match with that point. And it was such a pleasure just to have the midpoint be contested almost the entire game. And uh, I love fighting over gardens and moving from gardens to hockey stick to five points and that whole 
area to the west of uh, AA, just one of my favorite areas in Hella Loose period. So uh, I'm, I'm always for Sam Marie Dumont. And all the streamers are now live with their streams. So we're closer than ever to making it happen. And that <laughs> flip is happening. Thank Lord. Again, thanks so much, everyone, for bearing with us while that those issues were worked out. Um, we're just 30 seconds away from a map change and finding out what the midpoint is going to be here. So if it is, is, is it going to be a week's nightmare with Dugout or is it going to be uh, <laughs> Pierre's or AA? Uh, I personally am hoping for AA, but uh, we will certainly see here in just a moment. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier, I think the most even point to uh, see a good fight over mid would be AA, so that's what I'm hoping for as well. All right, we'll swap over to start to Private Ryan, who is with Hell at Loose Elite. Oh, Leave. no. <laughs> it's dug out. It's dug out. Awake, you've you've really done it again with your, uh, with your jinxing here. I mean, if Merc <laughs> loses, I get to change Moscow's name for a week, so I'm fine with that, but... <laughs> Right. You, you have uh, a bet. Now I'm wondering if this whole glitch business was your part, uh, as you're doing with uh, trying to get this to, to win this bet. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for for the dugout, uh, Merrick has to play the border of the map, I think, to a T. If they lose that border, I don't think they win. Uh, I forget what their fourth point is. Oh, it's, yeah, they have to win the border. They have to hold that border because they have offset points. This is like the exact same setup actually as the silver final that we saw 8th and 11th, I believe, play right. on SMD and Knight. Um, with 8th ended up winning that 5-0, yeah. but it was basically a battle for dugout for 80 minutes. Yeah, we could introduce our streamers right now while we have the warm-up as well. So we have Private Ryan, who is going to be playing infantry for Hell at Loose Elite. We have Coffee. Trokey here, who is in uh, armor for HLLE. Time and then to finally, fuck. Finally, we have House, who I believe is playing uh, infantry for Merc. So only one Merc point of view for this match, but yeah, uh, it'll, it'll sure be a great one. Uh, I want to drop them for. Yeah, I was dropped them for Ray. Up to the wall. We have Out. Ryan. Then you use your M1. Uh, defenses around some nodes, and then we have Trokey also just getting up to the wall in his uh, looks like to be the Panzer Two. Yep, Panzer Two. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited to see this uh, this fight over mid. Me too. I, uh, I'm also, also with the uh, the arty, see how effective the arty is, and see if um, Merc can this. snipe one of the trucks <laughs> off rip. Yeah, Merc is really good with uh, with their arty. I know Weatherman is one of the one of the best in the game on the uh, on the big gun. So. Um, Definitely a, a player I always look for on the other team, and if he's around, I, I take extra caution not to drive in a very obvious spot. Right. we we'll swap to House here, as uh, he's just waiting to pull his OP to get before he trucks, so he should be one of the first to the point that we see. Looks like Ryan is also in the truck uh, for Hello Loose Elite, spawning in on an outpost to get up in there, so 20 minutes, 20 seconds now until the ball drops. Lasers in. I feel like it's also going to be interesting where the year, where the mini, where the medium tanks go. I can see HLE can maybe playing a little bit of gr a little aggressive point on the uh, wait, side wait, dugout, wait, 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 a little bit of cover for the hill. I got a little bit of a late, wait, 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 yeah, little we got bit one more late wait. start for that truck. Oh, and the truck is full, so he has to jump out on top. That's that's a luck in the beginning there. I never close up on the truck. They yeah, get run over. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, while it seems like such a small delay, I think they're going to seriously impact their 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 first setup. I mean. Yeah, fair. The margins in this game are so thin.
hear rocket snipes going out. Yeah. And that truck is getting started. Boys, don't walk on. Full truck into, into garden. We'll swap over here to Ryan really quick because he's now into the strong point. Three to zero, right off the bat for a hell of a silly on, on dugout barn. Or the dugout. I made the same mistake. Yeah. So I think now at this point with uh, HL Elite capping the point 3-1, um, would you as Merc still prioritize trying to get immediate pressure on that point or now focus on making sure you are completely set up the way that you want? Well, if join out there, it looks like he's very concerned about getting to the point, crossing over this field as a fucking wizard just past him. <laughs> so uh, it looks like they're committing pretty hard to get in there and at least not make a couple of loose leads shot. Uh, you know, too easy here. Yeah, I mean, like, you can't just give him, like, a free cap. I mean, yeah, they did mess up the beginning, but, like, you still have to, like, buy. You can't just give up a free, a free, like, advantage to them. That's what it's kind of, like, looking like, because they did kind of get their soul uncontested. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and Proki is also on the point in that answer, too, just so has, in, a, uh, in a very conservative. Opening thing and then go well. Yeah, it definitely fucked it up. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Do we want to take the main road to the point? Just keep yeah, pushing forward. You guys saw what, uh, what House just did trying to place that OP. Um, he was never able to pick up his outpost from right before the wall drops, so that's definitely going to make him play a little bit more conservative, at least for the next 45 seconds, well 30 seconds yeah. now to get his squad in. Well you see that he's currently up there without, like, you know, squad support, so he's he's definitely on you know, fight or flight, but let's make sure we're not dead, get the rest of the squad in here, because he's on front lines. Mm -hmm. We could swap over to the trophy here now, the Panther too, and he is... Kind of suppressing the, the area that has I have a reverse I'm checking case. left, just keep coming right me Just versus back slightly, don't even we got high velocity coming in from our left hand side Copy Yeah, that just hit the hedge, hold there I'm not seeing anything down there So one squad lead, that's it Collins going after that uh, medium. Liber animal. Should be down soon. Nice. I'm not gonna move until that medium goes down. Yeah, they are crossing right to left here. Make it difficult. The that last guy was crossing the field, so we might yeah, end up actually seems like they a little bit closer to the control over the point. We got yeah, we got him for watching the high ground on our right. Just, just watch down his hedge line on the main road, mate. Yeah, we can see uh, with Ryan here. Ryan is now to the east, uh, pushing up to like five points area. Kind of a, a little bit of a high ground uh, point to get to, and if they're controlling that area to begin with, um, it's going to be hard for him to really uh, establish another prong of attack. Behind you with the OP. If you die, the other can't spawn on my OP. I'm not behind Sam now. No one will have any chat now. I'm glad to see the comment. Yeah. Chris is still alive and well. Oh, that, that, that never goes. We'll be on the main road here. <laughs> Come back in a hundred years and that'll be the case. Should I start repping him? I'm up. I'm a back up. Just hold that, just hold that. Okay. Jump out and rep. We hit her at once. Copy. You know, in the wall, oh, I did think uh, I will take the opportunity place. to segue into how amazing admin cam is going to be for us when that comes out. Ah. Oh, yeah. That's. Actually, the update's supposed to be this week, I think? Maybe a game changer for us casters. 
I saw heavy coming I in. I think it will be for, uh, for us as uh, match casters, but then I'm also curious to see um, how much better some of these uh, different groups get at sniping uh, with both rockets and artillery. I mean, you have some heavy hitters out there, like uh, I've seen some POV of dirty grunts, rocket snipes, and everything. I got the nades going down main road. Is that with the admin cam and actually watching with those rockets full? I wonder how many more people are going to get just as good at it. Back in. All right, throw her in reverse just in case. Yeah, we're losing boys here. Over time, it was especially with doing those streams. I'm pinned by that fucking armor though. Until that armor goes down, there's nothing we can do. Look, looking like HLLE's got a pretty solid hold on the dugout. Surprised they haven't taken it out already. Payment hey, is doing a lot of work. Uh, go back to, to Ryan here. Pushing down the road, it looks right into the team. Of, uh, or is he on the attack here? I can't quite tell there. Get a glimpse of the Looks like he's attacking right now. Yeah, they're pushing towards... They're pushing on that road towards the gardens. Yeah, we just saw a glimpse of his map. He's currently on the north side of Delta 5 on that on that road, northeast of the dugout. It does look like they are pushing towards the cattle sheds. Cleaning up there with the STG, good work. And gets cut down. <laughs> Go back to the Speaking of gardens, showing how important that the area is. The on the west side. So, if Murphy struggles to hold this area in the blue line, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to mount any sort of defense or offense. Uh, I am currently shelling. Double headshot right there with Safe. his Thompson. Safe. Am I vindicated yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. First shell inbound. You know that's probably Zito with the uh with the army there. Ryan is again back on the attack, pushing down this road, using those smokes to really good effect. They're coming, they're pushing that guy from the left out of uh, orchards. Down the way here. Push forward towards, push forward towards this, um, Pedro. Copy. On my move. Uh, I don't know why I didn't ping. It's okay. With a heavy 76 flanking wide for some reason down the red road. Yeah, it does seem like HLLE is making a little bit of headway with that push. You saw Ryan take down an outpost right there and just keep on going. They're not wasting any time to push into that next point of cattle sheds. He knows that there's going to be a garrison here too. He knows Merc is going to want one. You can see him looking for it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if that Gary's garden goes, or Gary goes down, that's your front door kind of opening slowly. It's just a key Gary to hold your Merc. I don't know if I would even call it slowly. If that frontline Gary goes down, that front door is wide open. This garrison right now. I think he just keeps running past it. PT 
to right now. Oh, he's using the box. He's, yep, he's got eyes on the box. He's doing some math. <laughs> oh, there's only a hundred. <laughs> They already got it. I'm looking at houses here. Yeah. Gardens. And that was a quick reaction. Yeah, Brian's cracked. Yeah, he's feeling good that he, he cleared that whole area out. Looks like hell, that HLE is going to get a garrison up on the, on the line over there. Holding that corner, I mean, you, you guys said it, like, that's, that's really, really, uh, uh where you want to be attacking from on, uh, on Scorch. Yeah, it's Let's go out to house here again. Yeah, it's so pushing towards the garden push again from, uh, Yeah, it's yeah, super we just saw him in a, a little tick. <clears throat> It's super important for Merc to get control of the gardens again. Like squad. I'm gonna clear the garden. If you hold the main road, that will be great. Breaking, breaking. We're seeing HLLE start a cap on cattle sheds. It's jumping back and forth between contested cap, losing. They're right there at that cost. They're gonna be starting that cap soon unless Merc does something to hold them off. Yeah, we can see Ryan here. It's just outside the point. From the mm, this is like the tricky thing with uh, offset points is how many, how much resources do you contribute to like the dead sector quote unquote that is in the north of uh dugout in the east or west sector of Capshed. So it's like kind of like this is a left of it's like you're not contributing to any of Cap or the Cap in no man's land, but you still have to have some presence there or else you just you know, lose your front door of attack. Speaking of, I, I don't think Merch has uh, Merch has very much presence at cattle sheds at all. Uh, from what I could tell, there's not very many HLLE members on that point, and they are capping. Oh, I, I switched to Ryan as he was getting the strong point, and he is get AP mine. So sorry for that very timely uh, commentator's curse, Ryan. So we're back with House while we wait for um, Ryan to get back up there. Actually, if we look here. He has a very, very close outpost uh, just to the southwest of the point, so some quick cap pressure able to be happening. Um, and they only have three men in their squad right now. Um, looks like it's Raz and Phantom along with uh, himself. That's what I'm saying. HLLE does not have very much pressure on cattle sheds at all, yet they are starting a cap, which means Merc is pretty much all hands forward trying to capture a dugout. They probably realize it's dugout or nothing, but I, I feel like they're leaving themselves open to, to get pushed even further back. So in, in moments like this where it's kind of a scramble between holding your point and losing it or capturing the point and not, how important is it for uh, timely and efficient OP hopping to either add quick attacking um, numbers or defending numbers? Um, just based off experience, like you just don't want to get to that point where it's a full reset. Um, I'll just bring up our uh, the seventh match is match versus six where we had to do a full full like reset. That is basically reason like number one. I don't know how we lost that match. So like if Merc has to do a full reset to where they don't have any attacking pressure, that just gives a ton of advantage to HLE. Like you, like you're gonna have to do it if it goes to that point, just so you don't lose fourth, but like, well, we've, we've seen it time and time again, if that out. happens, HLLE is going to capitalize on that initiative and they're just going to keep going. Yeah, that's what happened kind of in the, um, what was it, like 
like the gold final. Like I think HLE was like a second and a half away from tapping that point. Just a so close, but Murray basically full reset and recovered and nearly won that match. So you know, but this could be something close to that. It looks for now like they're holding them off, and you know it's still it's still getting contested, but they haven't started a full-fledged cap. But I, I do I do hope to see Merc pull a little bit of defensive back to cattle sheds to kind of uh, push that uh, that that enemy OP off right there because they're just breaking in. Yeah, um, and just being able to see it, uh, nothing you know too big happening right now, but uh, Choki, his oh, tank was trapped right, uh, right now. They've stopped for repairs. Yeah, it seems like they just got tracked. Yeah. Like, uh, HLE is, still has a little bit of cap pressure on. Um, we could swap over uh, to uh, Troki here in just a moment to see what he's got going on. Yeah, it looks like Troki's just kind of sitting and watching that road. Make sure nobody's popping up there. Yeah, they just got their tracks fully repaired. Yeah, we'll they'll go... probably be moving out soon. And this is Ryan again, uh, just pushing south of the uh, point of cattle sheds. And you can uh, see uh, once again that HLLE has started that cap. There's a nice little back and forth there. Both teams have about the same amount of players, but they gotta get that OP out of there. Your Murph. Yeah, that OP has got to go. And still, only three players on that outpost. You know, they could they could definitely cycle more people here if they wanted to and make it that much more uh, pressure going on. Now it looks like we are seeing a little bit. We've got two chevrons now on cattle sheds. Two to one, HLLE capping. Yeah, it's huge for Ryan to be able to be inside the cattle sheds right now. Gives you definitely all the cover that you need to be able to fight out of that. Yeah, as soon as he's made it into that barn, he has now switched from offense uh, mode to defense mode. Like now, mm -hmm. he should be uh, hunkering down. Of course, we saw him push out. He did get uh, did get murked there a little bit, um, but uh, he, he should have been pulling back, defending himself, and, and not giving his position away to just hold that cap pressure. I feel like Trophy just killed something. Oh, nice shot! An nice shot! You got an AT gun left on pink. Gun. Reverse straight back. They're just playing defense in their tank, which is definitely the smart thing to do. It's not even a half nice. of the game. I don't think I got the, the gun. It's behind one of those. Uh, push us straight forward again. I need to yeah, check around us. It feels kind of crazy that it's only been a half hour into the game as well, with, the, with all the action that's uh, occurred so far. Um, uh, we have House. Um, looks like he's well, wheeling well, back to play some radio. defense uh, from the good. north uh, the, uh, the Yeah, the east. Here. Yeah, he's like south southeast of cattle sheds right now. Yeah. Oh, he has an airhead in cattle sheds, by the way. Hey, I'm dead. I died. I was getting shot. Say that one more time. HLLE has an active exactly. airhead. Uh, yep, they have an active okay. airhead. Oh man. Let's hope HLLE reacts appropriately. You go to uh, Ryan's POV. He just splashed it, and I think he's throwing smoke on the airhead right now. It's right in front of the point. And it's right in front of house too. House is right here. Let's fe let's go to house. He's looking at it. He's oh, yeah. seeing Ryan's smokes being thrown. We have an opening for an SL. Let's see if we can get a spray down here. He's watching. I struck when Ace advanced and back. Very aggressive early airhead. House, we have control of the we garden now. I don't disagree with it though. Maybe. Yeah, the it airhead on, is yeah. not active. If you're gonna, if you're gonna make a push, we need to push. He's spawning in on a hot outpost. Oh, and the outpost was taken, but he's still in. Yeah, it looks like Merc is finally. Oh. Uh, he's gonna uh, come it, back and it he's got did. The Watching from uh, House's POV, it did sound like coming from his white chat. I want to say that uh, they said they have control, and looking at the map that he just flashed, it does look like Merc yeah, has taken uh, control of Gardens again. Yeah, that front line is definitely looking a little bit more established for Merc slanted that into the so definitely great work on the recovery there. If they can just keep that even push, they have they have a pretty good chance of, of overwhelming from multiple directions on dugout. Okay. 
trophy seems to be just still playing deep and using the time. I'm holding garden for now, so they don't take this. He just absolutely cut the I saw that. Holy shit. Uh, rocket snipers took out that rep station. Feel bad for ignoring our armor friends here. Bring gun left, hit this pig. Uh, it does look like HLLE has a flare up over the garden, so that's probably going to tell them everything they need to know. A bit high. About where see if you can get the bowels. I just saw guys went out of there. I expect to see some sort of commander uh, ability soon to kind of help clear that out and allow a push through. I'm surprised they're already still And if anything on that, on that bow? Nope, nothing. No squishes. I'll fire them off. Nothing. AP going back in. Roger, bring gun front. Garrison on, yeah, that Garrison on the left was observed that, that I was trying to. I think it's two people on the right side. He's burning outposts from his side of the wall. Yeah, I did. in that direction. Yeah, it has. You've got these two coming up behind you. Just into the gardens. Yeah, he's using this uh, elevation really well. Mm -hmm. You were saying it earlier, awake about that map edge and uh, you know Merc needing to really hold that down if they were going to be successful on dugout. Uh, looks like they're they're struggling over there on that side particularly. They're they're committed to the gardens, which is a great thing, but that map edge is definitely going to be hard as they push in without that and get are getting shot from that angle. Yeah, that's like the key to taking that point. Playing like hitting screens or pubs like. If you get that, it's very easy, in my opinion, to take it because then we're getting pushed if you just have that control, like gardens will come, so but if you just have gardens, like, gardens, like, gardens, like, and nothing over there, it's just like, you're just putting yourself into a bigger crossfire. We took out two quite rough in our 76s, but then, that's a, yeah, that's high velocity front again. Yeah, empty through the cornfield. Oh, yeah, there they are. Uh, I just saw definitely a 76 Looks like round Trokey overhead. just keeps inching his, uh, his uh, tank closer and closer towards recon. the, uh, yeah, a good sightline right. towards gardens. Bring gun left, bring gun left, bring gun left. Push from that way that much to harder. observe. Yeah, they have a great Attack. field of view right now. Yeah, AP in. You want me to spin armor? No, no, no. It's 76, so. He's far out coming down the red road, my observe, but we may well get eyes. In case you're wondering what's going on elsewhere, House is still fighting over the gardens, right side. and uh, Ryan is working to reestablish that push that he had on cattle shed, so we'll stick here at Trokey as it looks like he might be getting engaged in the tank battle here. Dropping smoke? Yeah, you can uh, see on his POV, uh, it looks like the commander marked oh, a tank in. in the general direction he's looking. Yeah, he was pinged on observe. Is that, art is that artillery smoke or 75 smoke? I think it's hardy smoke. Nope. That's fucking tank smoke. Yeah, that's tank smoke. Right. I can see his rounds whizzing past right to left here. So I reckon we'll all get Just eyes. push forward ever so slightly, Donny. Let's see if we can get eyes. Just a little bit more elevation might give us a shot. Copy. In first. Might need to go left. I feel like we're seeing a pretty back. solid nah, scale he's right now between the two points. Yeah. Neither team really making much advance. Mm -hmm. I think Ali's in a better position to see, to be honest. Uh, Merc's map here, it looks like it's they're pretty 
solid in on, on gardens now. So Back in really reverse, good, just in case. Good work by them uh, fighting off most of uh, HLLE's push there. Um, still some work yep. to do to recapture fully, but um, definitely a better spot than they were just 10 minutes ago. Well, it definitely yeah. looks like they've got that front line held down, but did we get a glimpse of their of their flank? Is their flank exposed at all? Wasn't able to see. We'll see if we can look here as we uh, rejoin house. Oh my God! Fucking weatherman. I'll be the better. Nice shots by house. Satchel on the left, Satchel on the left. The OP is on the left side of that. Definitely, an old tree somewhere around in the garden. It's like how just trying to do the, the push to hockey stick. He you know, thinks that they're a hockey stick. Uh, garrison that they might have marked over there. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, it, it looks like House was able to mark, or somebody was able to mark Trokey's tank. Oh my god. Doesn't seem like they've had a lot of pressure on uh, Trokey and, and his uh, crew. Let's, uh, let's actually look at him. He's, he's pushed up to where that um, aforementioned hockey stick location is. So viewers, if you if you weren't aware, it's that kind of hockey stick looking trench. They're trying to build up cattle sheds, huh? Shots from... Uh, I've got eyes left. Yeah, so that tank thing was. probably trying to destroy rough stations that are possibly around them. Is... I mean, there is. Oh, they have their panther there, there as well. Yeah. 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 It's definitely bad. Ass. I mean, this is this is a smart thing to do if you're trying to draw fire or something. Get on the high ground in the open. I'm seeing I'm seeing high velocity nice. land on twenty back here. But so with the Axis, uh, obviously having the the Tiger and the Panther, are there any uh, um, so situations where you guys would rather take the Tiger over me. the Panther? Um, not really, no, in my opinion. I mean, I don't really already. tank that much. I mean, I like I'll it. do it in pubs, but never in a comp game. That's too stressful for my brain. Um, I don't think there's too much of a difference personally, other than the speed of what the Panther goes, but... I think the Tiger can bounce more. No, I haven't heard am, it I, am I wrong about that? I have no idea. The, the panther is a little bit more bouncy, I think, when you're coming to stops from gear. Um, but, like, I, you know, last night we played a uh, summit-style match, so there was no panther. And some of the feedback that I think was interesting is just hearing how much lower the tiger was, too. And those little peaks that you maybe are able to do in a panther over, like, a piece of cover or, what you know, whatever, just getting your tank a little bit more entrenched aren't necessarily possible with the Tiger. So that's a wrinkle that, you know, I didn't even realize, but um, obviously is uh, a factor for those armor guys. I'll be on that barrier. Yeah. And something that, uh, you know, Merc has been known for and not saying that it's non-existent, I just haven't seen it, but I wonder how uh, Merc's <laughs> tanks are doing. Because, I mean, Trokey hasn't had any tank versus tank interaction yet, which is a good thing, I would say, because infantry should be the ones that are taking out the tanks, at least at a higher level. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder how Merc's tankers are doing right now. I did see on House's map that they do have one heavy coming out of their HQ right now towards uh, Cattle. Um, but that's the only one that I could spot from his map briefly. And yeah. HLE's starting to put pressure on yep. Cattle as well. Yep, starting the cap again. Looks like they're actively capping. Yeah, we'll we'll go back to. Uh, Trokey's tank in. is on the move. Um, I don't know if he's going to be bringing the tank all the way up to assist with the cap pressure. I think if he is, then it 
it almost seems like HLE is going all in, uh, but it does look like Choki's tank just came to a stop with a good sighting into cattle sheds. I think we might be able to see the tank be tank with Troki in a bit, because I know the heavy from Merc is coming up. It looks like they're shelling just the, the middle of the cattle shed right now from a distance. And mm -hmm. actually a really good spot. Ryan uh, takes an outpost. The commander did just mark a tank uh, to the left of Troki's POV. Um, it doesn't look like he's turning to engage that. He's still suppressing. Yep, he's now he's starting to turn. Loading AP. Shit, Ali's fucking been AP. Uh, might be able to see our first tank v tank battle here in a second. Yeah, you can see him slowly pushing up, just trying to maintain eyes on that opening. Yep. Let's just hold it there. Cap pressure Looks has like stopped, for for what it's worth. Like, Troki's just going to post up and wait it out. Tank was on recon, but I don't know what it was. Garrison behind us. While this is going ATV on, um, Ryan is press, in the middle press, of the press, cattle press. sheds right now. 1-1 uh, one, one capturing for HLLA. Yeah, Herc, you said it uh, best earlier. Now with Ryan being inside the cattle sheds, you almost need to swap to a defensive mindset, uh, even though you're on the attack, once you get into a pretty oh, no, core piece of cover point. inside the center of the point. On. Yeah, because at that point you're not, you know, you know, you're not needing to run around. You need to be applying that cap weight to the point. And if you run out and die, that cap weight's not there. Could use a repair station here. Seventy six is pushing down the pink road on observe. I think also uh, from seeing Ryan uh, when he comes up on the uh, the map every once in a while, it seems like his squad has the closest OP to point. Yeah, he seems to be pretty good about uh, sneaking in there and, and putting his OP in a place that is protected, yet still provides easy access for him and his squad to just sneak in and wreak some havoc. Well, that's the famous Dirt Raz right there on the uh, on the officer role, so not surprising to see them in the middle of the uh, of the offense there and getting some damage in. I'm not sure what just happened to Merc's tank, but I think it got taken out by... An AT gun? From behind? I don't know, I just saw an explosion where Troki's tank was saying that. And we see that cap still happening. 2 1 on that point. Yeah. Merc really needs to fall back and create that defensive. Uh, we saw House just a second ago establish a garrison, but it looks uh, like his garrison was further west. Sounds like we have a bombing run coming in. For HLLE? Uh, I believe so. Uh, House just had his map up and I did not see uh, any marker for friendly. It is a bombing run on the western border of the map for HLE? And this tank is sending it right now, Troki is. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he is pushing in. Yeah, I mean, they have the point mid, like, more than halfway capped right now, so... Oh, Troki's taking fire from something. Yeah. It's a shot to his left, I believe. I think all of Merc's about to spawn on their defensive, Gary. They have to now. You're three-fourths capped. You gotta do a reset. Let's see if HLLE is gonna, like I said earlier, capitalize on that initiative of taking this point. Oh, Decent sized spawn wave. It looks like enough of a spawn wave to stop that cap. Yeah, I just have to deal with a tiger in their in their point now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna present a whole nother challenge. Yeah, you see from House's view there, they're pretty much all collapsing back onto point, trying to provide as much defense as they can. Yeah, Feels like HLLE is just coming out of the out of the cornfields everywhere. Yeah, defending at 2-2 right now, so it's, uh, Troki's about to go down. Troki just took another shot. He is. Their engine, yeah, their engine's, engine's fully gone. 
hole totally is smoked. what an eighth. A stiff breeze takes them out. <laughs> Just shooting. I love it. Just keep banging close front. Just keep banging close front. Can't see anything. You hear him calling out. Just keep banging close front. Just fire those shells at the ground. We can't see. Kill everyone around us. <laughs> The good thing is, is they're not dead. Take a lot of And it attention. looks like they've got some repairs in progress, too. Oh, take another big hit. Tracks, though. Yeah, they are repairing. I think they have another tank in the point for HLE. I think I just saw that pop up, yeah. Do they have all three tanks? Because I think I hear another coax. If that's the case, I mean, all all three armors on the offensive point, is, Merc's got to do something about those armors yeah. before they can even try to handle the infantry. Looking at Merc's map, they do not have a garrison on point, and they have just maybe one or two outposts there that they're, that they're subsisting off of. And now they lost their last outpost on the point. We should see uh, some cap pressure be regained by HLLE here. You see the whole team of Merc spawn on that western uh, western Gary there. They're all just booking it to point on foot, trying to get there. Probably to provide that cap pressure before they lose that point. I mean, it looks like they did it well enough. They are defending there for the second. Yeah, now it looks like they're beginning to lose it again. I mean, it's just a lot of back and forth here. Just yeah, a lot. Yeah, I think it's a mad scramble for both teams. Um... <laughs> it's definitely advantage to HL the lead right now, but Merc, I do have to give to them. They're scrambling very well to hold this point. Yeah, well, if you glance at HLLE's map, it looks like they're, they're losing their push, too. It's like both teams started kind of organized on this push, and the further we get into this engagement, the more cohesion that both teams are losing. But they might lose it at the same time, just enough yeah. to stop that cap. Who knows? Yeah, you can see with, uh, with Ryan's POV, um, there's a panther up there with him now to his left and they're still two to one on that cattle sheds still two two capping they're no doubt looking for where that those big spawn waves are coming from You two cap, but again, if you look at the map, there's really not very many players from HLLE on the cattle sheds, uh, or even anywhere close to the point. Yeah, they're they're three two, or they're more than three quarters of the way there on the cap. I think HLLE is going to close it out with the cap here. Yep, Trokey, still on that point. Somehow was able to survive. Really incredible work by HLE keeping him up. Yes. It looks like they're still working on repairing him. Yeah. All right, so it looks like HLE has captured the point and immediately contested the next point, which is the barn. Well, uh, looking at House's map, uh, Merc does not have a garrison on their final point. They did, but HLE was taking it down as they were capping. I think they had two, and then they both went down like within three minutes. I mean, if that was planned like that, that's very cohesive work by HLLE. That's a very good play. Which I think is all we can expect from teams of this caliber is um, coordination like that. Well, those kinds of plays are what wins the games, really. It's not just mm -hmm. the uh, running in and to the meat grinder and keep going. You know, you, you got to have that strategy. And, and if that, that was the coordinated play, it really was. Now, Merc does have two blue line Garys to uh, immediately start putting pressure back on cattle sheds. That's Which, a tough push it, across that wheat field. Yeah, let's see if they're going to be is. able to make it happen before HLLE starts that cap on, uh, on the barn. Which I think HLLE lost the few infantry they had up in that sector uh, close to the barn. So it looks like there may be a bit of a hold on that push. That was pretty cool to uh, to watch right there. Ryan and House were engaging one another. 
But with these with these blue line Garys and pushing cattle sheds, what would you say is the best route to take to try to attack that point other than the uh, the wheat fields? Uh, if you're Merc, you have to control the radar station and anything south of that. I mean, you have at this point like you have to obviously go. For, well, I mean, not saying go for broke. There's still 45 minutes left, but you have to control like what's in, like the like the front door of your defense at this point because that's basically how HLE took that point. I mean, they did have like what two to three tanks in there, but you have to control what's south of your point. Like, I mean, obviously, you have to have pressure on the blue line. The blue line. But they only that is what's gonna help you retake cattle. They also have to be super careful about pigeons. With it being the last point, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of incentive to pull back and defend at you know every chance that every need for defense. Then and it could potentially lead to Merc being kind of trapped in that last point. Most tigers on my t on my tank marker. Oh my god. Copy. Enemy guns are up. I was telling you boys throw some smokes. I looks like we're seeing Trokey in an engagement there. And Trokey is down. They're all dead. <laughs> I mean, it did take him for a while to kill that tiger that Trokey was in. I mean, fair play to that tank crew for staying alive on one hit for so long. A little bit of a, a lull in the uh, action here. We see we see Ryan is hanging out on point cattle sheds. They are holding a three to one cap on that point. I think he's seeing some contact to his north northwest. Back to house here. He's just grinding it out in that wheat field right now. Reestablishes OP. Oh, pistol action! Let's go. This is what the people came. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I need to see a knife. I need a knife fight again. Looks like Merc has both their tanks kind of moved up there too. I see two heavies, I thought. Rookie's pushing uh, back up in another heavy. He'll be a minute though. HLE does spot the two tanks on on the recon plane. Ryan's getting some logistical work done on the, uh, looks like that is the south side of the point. I Can't think quite that's make it out. far east. Right. I think it's just south of the uh, fifth point for Echoli. Great trigger discipline we just saw from Ryan there. He held fire, checked to make sure there was no one else around, then killed the guy. How 
house is dead as well. Just to get an idea of Merck's map right now, they are really pushing their way back up into the point. Does it look like they may be trying to establish some sort of presence west, probably in Brayport Battery? Yeah, that's what it looks like, but for me, that's not the play. I mean, have one squad there maybe, but they have oh like three goodness. SLs there. Yeah, they had three SLs there. I was just wondering if they're going to try to set up some sort of garrison or flank, flank over there. Looks like House is getting uh, farmed off of that garrison by artillery or a tank or something, but he spawns just to die right away there. Yeah. Average you see him try to figure there. out which one to take. <laughs> Copy, I see that move. Trophy's nearly back up to the cattle sheds as well. There's a rep station waiting for him. I want to push through cattle sheds. Uh, that's where their armor is as well. They, they're going Looks like house might have crashed. Push, I think. Yeah, house disconnected. Ah, oh, no, uh, the beauty of server browser. Looks like he's loading the back end though, at least. Yeah. Oh, and there's too many squads. <laughs> he's he's looking for the one he belonged to. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk uh, to Ryan. He's he's about to spawn in on an outpost right outside of the point here. Yep. Front door. That's what I was about to, that's what I was about to say. It, on the barn? It looked, like a, it looked like a couple minutes ago, yeah, on final point, but it looked like a couple minutes ago that uh, HLA Lee had a garrison um, not too far back from his outpost that I don't see anymore. Yeah, I think they were uh, trying to set up one Hotel 3 uh, south of barn. No, it's there. It's oh, right it's there. there. Oh, Just yeah, next it is. to Rude Yeah. That could be a tremendous attack point for HLLE. But simultaneously, if Merc does create that garrison over in Braycourt Battery, it's going to be kind of the same thing for them. If they take cattle sheds, they've got a front door into dugout. So really, both teams, I think, may be trying to establish that flanking garrison there. Guys, guys, they're coming all from the direction of my ping along the hedge line. Trophy back up yet? Looks like he. Don't hold on, move, mate. Push straight through. He going to support? No, Don't he's still. He is still moving. <laughs> Copy, got it. So he's about 500 meters away from cattle sheds now. Another time, I'll come serve. Yeah, just roll straight through, mate. House is in some some really tough action. Yeah. yeah. That garrison that he spawned on is about to go down. All our infantry engaged in some real, real action right now between House and uh, and Ryan. Looks like there's a very large majority of the Merc players on defense, it seems right now. There's like five OPs on defense. I think they only have like four or five in the West. Yeah, that, that garrison that House has spawned on is hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just cannot get off of it. House has been getting farmed off that garrison for quite some time. I could I could feel his frustration there. Yeah, it's locked well, Ryan down over now. here is absolutely down. feasting with this STG. What a beast. Has he pushed into the point yet? Not quite. He's, he's I mean, he's in their sector, but uh, he's... Oh, he's at the radi uh, radar. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha, gotcha. Finally, 
HLE took out that garrison that Hump was spawning on over and over again. So uh, hopefully that is able to get them to be able to cut that map in half, but it's not helping House here out very much. And Troki looks like he's moving to the east side of the map to support his infantry that are pushing that front door. So he's about to make uh, maybe a left onto that main MSR into the barn. Yeah, and if that infantry supports him properly, I mean, they're just going to roll right on in. I'm sure they'd like to get like an AT or a, a rep station up there for him. Uh, just so that he can kind of post up on that um, radar and just poke in and out. We look at the radar here. That's where Ryan is right now. Like for a second that Merc got a mark on that garrison that's south of the barn. So they may be aware of that spawn point and trying to move to eliminate it soon. Just curious of when Merc's gonna get a little bit more desperate. I mean, half hour to go, but... It's just kind of just like a shooting range right now between like people at the radar and Merck's defense point, it seems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's... not being much of a unified push. Yeah, it's, I mean, HLE has control of the entire blue sector apart from the far west, but like, if I'm HLE, I, they can have the far west. Well, like... and it, they did have control of it for a few minutes. They had a garrison established over there in Delta 3. Um, that was there for a while, and then we saw those Merc squad leads pushing in. I was thinking that they were going to try to set up a Gary of their own, but maybe they were just trying to eliminate that defensive Gary they got eyes on. But that garrison's no longer there. Uh, but they did. They did certainly have control of the entire blue line for a while. Yeah. I mean, if I was Merc too, I mean, you got to know who you're playing. Um, even though there's still, like, 33 minutes left, uh, you know, playing a team like HLLE, you're going to need every second possible to try to start capping both cattle sheds and um you know midpoint so like you guys said earlier i wonder how desperate they're going to be getting here soon i mean they have to start soon because i look at it as you have 15 minutes to capture two points to win if you're merc yeah i mean that's that's a lot to ask i mean yeah it's like oh there's only a half hour left it only takes you know two minutes to cap a point well it takes a while to get to, you know, you finally capping, you know, it took HLE like half the game to take. You yeah, know, you have to point. be establishing that pressure early on or you're just not going to have enough time to do it. I mean, it's all loose. Anything can happen. Like, you never know. Merc could sneak in a sneaky garrison that somehow spawns the entire team and they take cattle. But as things are looking right now, it's plays are going to have to be made from, from Merc. Looks like we might have a potential battle between Ryan and House's squad as House has his OP set up in those like orchard area on um, on the barn and uh, looks like Ryan is pushing out that way with some fancy footwork of course. <laughs> Really fancy footwork. <laughs> yeah.
really the smart throwing the used. smokes like that to the uh, to the west because they're gonna blow east across the road. Looks like Troki's really into an attacking position right now. His heavy tank. Oh yeah, look at this uh, angle that Troki has here. Looks like he may have eyes on an enemy armor. He's oh, taking yeah. his shots. I think it's a Stewie. He's got one shot in. Might have hit turret. Uh, he just got hit in the tracks. Yep, he's taking some fire now. He's done a really good job all the game, though. Him and a credit to his crew for keeping his tank up. I think this is only the third total tank they've been in all game. I think that's kind of how Merc is going to have to win this because if HLE loses yeah. tanks at this point when they're this pushed up, it's going to take a while for them to get back. If um, Merc then capitalizes over that off that, that'd be huge. Speaking of uh, Troki, he just took a shot to his hull that has almost completely destroyed him, and I don't believe he knows where it came from. He knows yeah, the general like direction, but there is no ping. Yep, and he just went down. Merc's Switching back that. over to House, we see House putting some work in on this defense. He has uh, been engaged in a little firefight here. He's taken like three or four down, but of course, as soon as I say switch, he is down <laughs> himself. Uh, bombing run coming in. I don't know who placed it. Looks like HLE uh, 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 HLLE did. Yep. Is that coming in on barn? Yes. Uh, yes. It's One to two on the barn right now. The western side of the barn, like that main road. Where it went down. Don't think it got... No, it did not get the Gary. Ryan has there. his hint pop up. Remind him how to bandage. <laughs> Chad oh, move. Like, he doesn't know. Probably because he was level one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's see what kind of tank uh, they're going to be getting in. It looks like uh, Troki and his crew are waiting for a tank to spawn. There is a Puma there, but it doesn't look like they're going for it. Take the Puma, please. Puma, please. <laughs> you know how funny it would be if uh, one of Merc's strats was, you know, we're just going to put, like, Belgian gates or, like, the tank traps in St. Marie Dumont so they can't take tanks through the town or through the church area <laughs> just get them stuck honestly i think that would be one of the most funny things to do in like a game like this <laughs> but look at house here reclaiming this uh this radar bit yeah he's pushing in on it definitely seeing some contact inside that bunker we'll see if he can hold out i'm curious of who drove the truck right there that got it blown up so you can't <laughs> enter oh come on that's good cover uh, looks like Troki is going to be taking a Tiger again. Interesting move to have the uh, the Panther available to you, but they they have uh, consistently, every heavy they've gotten, they've gone for a Tiger. Maybe they're I just on it... that bad side of the rotation. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it just could be like all the, like, the other yeah. Tigers just took the Panther. You're going to get the Tiger now. House's OP is going hot on the blue zone right now. Yeah, he's trying um, to clear out that radar bunker. Still haven't seen much of a push from Merc back onto cattle sheds, or at least not that we've been able to tell from our from our points of view. But looking at the map, it, not much good, of a push. Good trigger discipline by Ryan here. Um, I wonder what he's planning on doing with this tank. He shoveled somebody. Holy hell. Yes, you got your wish away. <laughs> oh. You got it. Clip it. See, he does have a satchel on him. Is he going to push yeah, up and, and try to eliminate this armor? STG satchel. Really great class in the game to STG satchel. I'm going to say it really depends on who's using it. Is that a medium? Yeah. It is. Uh, yeah. That's what it looked like goes down he was not able to make it uh you guys were talking about it earlier but how funny you would be uh with the belgian gate in saint marie dumont that's the exact route that trochee's taking please my th this game would be complete no matter the outcome if that's actually a possible thing that happened <laughs> 
Well, I mean, it just goes to show that, you know, by the time that we've all reached this point in playing the game, we know the path that people are going to take. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like, obviously, there's, like, peaks that people are finding out now with server browser and just new things with tanks and stuff. I mean, I know PC's had it for a while, now finally console has it, so kind of interesting to see. Like, I personally, like, I made a truck video for some of the guys, and... You can actually drive a truck through the cemetery that Troki's driving by right now. Like, you can literally drive it through on the border, on the eastern border of the map. It's hard to do, but, you know, just little things that people find make yeah. the game go around, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a great little spot, too, on the east side of, uh, of uh, the gardens there. Like house is trying to clean house. It looks like Merc. If you go to House's POV, Merc or HLE built Belgian gates for them to hop on top of. That he's and he's dead. Okay, I'm not talking. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm, I feel the same way. Yeah, like just like that kind of strategy too. Building Belgian gates to get a higher like peak advantage, so you're not like peeking around a bush. You're on top of the bush. Looking yeah, because around. I mean, this is a this is not a very vertical game. So any verticality you can gain is going to be an advantage on your opponent, no matter what. We do see that HLLE has garrisons surrounding the barn. We just haven't seen a cohesive push from them yet. It looks like uh, Ryan and his squad have a an OP inside the uh, four grid squares of the barn. They're just pushing in from that west. Um, excited to see if HLLE is, is going to use these garrisons they have placed everywhere. I think they're just waiting for the right time to push. Because I feel like if, if they overextend... Merc, I feel like, is a team that will take an easy advantage of that. Because they, like, we've seen it before, they are really good at collapsing when they need to. They were just, they were, I think, got unfortunate in this game. They didn't collapse, you know, well enough. Um, but if HLE does overextend just a little bit, Merc will take advantage of that. So I think they're just waiting for the right time. I mean, there's only 23 minutes left. So obviously, it's week one of TPL. Like, you kind of want to start out with a win, and I think they just don't want to, like, maybe risk anything, because they... Yeah, and I guess that plays to yeah, that. How aggressive are the te these teams going to get this early on in the season? Um, I mean, it's a good thought. I didn't think about, uh, you know, overextending. I was just thinking about Merc has kind of not got an organized push on cattle sheds, and this would be the time for HLE to collapse in, but you're right. If if they do overextend, it could come out, and uh, it could be an easy vic uh, victory for, for Merc on the first map of the game. Or the season. I think they did get some spawns on that red zone gear that they built. I'm not sure though. Ryan's playing fantastically, by the way. Ryan is really, really putting in a great performance. I've seen the him take out so many out something. outposts. 22 minutes left or sub 23 yeah. minutes left. They're going to have to start going all out. Um, because like I said earlier, yeah, it only takes two minutes to cap a point, but how long is it going to take to beat HLLE back to be able to capture not one but two points? While all this infantry action is going on, uh, viewers, we have Trokies kind of getting back to where he went down earlier in the field uh, just south of Barn. Hey, Cap, it does sound like we are losing you. We're hearing every other word. Sorry about that. I think oh. he's saying Trokey's pushing the barn. Not sure where his mic audio issues are coming in, but... Oh yeah, I do see uh, Trokey's coming up on that eastern side of Cattle Sheds over east of Rue de la Guerre, coming up south of the barn. Looks like they may be... Maybe HLLE's waiting for that armor to get back up to the front before they mount that push in.
see Ryan, it looks like he is just continuing to try to push in. He is taking shots right now and some rockets. Let's see if he can come out on top. He did not. Twenty minutes left. Yeah, we're Merch still gonna have to really yeah. start mounting something here soon. But looking at the map, they don't have any forward garrisons, any attack pressure on cattle sheds at all. Yeah, and then obviously Merx has the airhead available, but like, it's yeah, so predictable we're... at this point that HLE will just collapse on it, like. Bombing on airheads, yeah, like they're obviously the most desperate thing in the game to do. They work 1% of the time, in my opinion, depending on the situation, but... Yeah, I mean, we're we're treading into that territory, and you, you said it perfectly. Is we're treading into the desperation the airhead tactic. 20 minutes against, you know... I, if you're a team playing against Merc or playing against HLLE, being down 4-1 20 minutes is not a lot of time at all. No, it's honestly like a five-minute game, it feels like, at this oh, point. Like, yeah. I feel like whatever happens in the next five minutes kind of determines how the rest of the game's going to go for Merc. I mean, HLE I... doesn't have to do anything. They can just honestly sit on defense and just look pretty. Um, they're not going to do that, obviously, but... I completely agree. The next five minutes are going to make the match. It does seem, though, that Merc did collapse back to Barn to hold that defense and then just got caught, uh, caught in that pigeonhole there. They were, they were not able to break back free to mount anything on cattle sheds. Mm -hmm. I was noticing the same thing, Herc. Yeah, because it's... Because, like, Merc is pushing a, putting a lot of good pressure on the western side of cattle, which I think that's honestly going to be... A, it's going to be their play. Like, they're going to have to do that with... Ah, uh, but the western yeah, side of cattle is so open. I mean, you can mount a push over there, but making it two cattle sheds from the west is going to be damn near impossible against um, a team like HLLE. Looking at uh, House's POV, Merc does have a wide open red zone garrison behind cattle sheds. Yeah, oh, they that's... sure do. They sure do. This, what is that, this... Fox 4? Yeah, this could be that next five minutes, you know, game plan that you guys were just talking about was the next five minutes being the most important. If they can mount a push off of that and then also collapse from the front door, if HLLE overcommits to that red zone Gary, they could actually capture or at least start to pressure cattle ships within the next five minutes. Let's get a glimpse of the map on HLLE side. It looks like they do have a garrison, a defensive garrison just to the west of Merck's offensive garrison, maybe about 100 meters. Also, uh, I don't know if you guys caught it too, uh, Humph, who's commanding for Merck, did just put down an airhead on top of uh, cattle sheds. Uh, with a bombing run. With a bombing run. Well. It looks like their attack garrison is locked out, so I think it's all going to come down to this airhead. Just reopened. Uh, it sounds like it just said from uh, House's POV that the airhead is gone. Mm. That's a big hit for, for Merc. Honestly, though, like that, uh, that airhead play is honestly a distraction airhead. You kind of waste that amount of manpower just to keep eyes on that airhead, you know, get HLE um, collapsing, just so they can get more spawns in that blue zone or, or Merc, on that red zone. Merc has an airhead on cattle sheds. 
Yeah, it is down. Ryan yeah, I think that was getting some trap pressure head. there for a second. Yeah, uh, Merc's attacking Gary in the red zone is also locked out now. And do we see Troki at the front line? Is he supporting that push on Barn? He's satcheling something. That's Brian satcheling the AT gun. It looks like yep. Troki is holding down the angle with uh, with his tank yeah. just from a distance. On a we see him set up looking at the barn, so it looks like this may be the time that HLL is going to choose to push. Push us forward. Just go straight forward. Contested on last point. Yeah, fourth mate, let's go straight forward. Gotcha. Yeah, I think HLE is going for broke now. And and honestly, a good thing for HLE because we were starting to see some of that pressure mount from Merc. So HLE applying that pressure to the barn is going to force Merc to pull back, and it's going to secure the win for HLE. I think either way, with this amount of pressure at this stage of the game, it's uh, it's not looking good for Merck's prospects to be able to come out of this one with a win. And Ryan, what a flick there. Man, two down, quick succession, and then an outpost. Dude. He is cleaning up over there. It's a huge play. And he's right on the point, basically. Yeah, each one of those outposts is particularly devastating to lose. And some nice accuracy over distance with the STG. Another outpost. Another outpost. Looks like he's cleaning it up. He's taking them all down. Tank. Yeah, they're capturing last point now. I think they just he was pushing him. in onto that northern side, yeah. so he's he's cleared out at least two defensive squads right there just by taking those outposts. And Troki took out a tank or something on the point just now, and as he's and we pushing see, in, we see looking at Merc's map, they are very low on defensive outposts. I, they're also I, low on yeah. players on the point. One they outpost on defense Gary. for for Merc. Yeah, I, I think, think this might wrap it up here. Yeah. It looks like HLLE's got two to three outposts in the point on that western side. Um, Troki is engaging at 76. Looks like he's coming out of spawn. I think he took first shot. He did. Yeah, but he's oh, got a hit on he's him. He's got reinforcements, so another tank is shooting that tank, I believe. Yep, it just went down. I think that's that's going to be game. Oh, wow. Yeah. Great teamwork by Merc, by HLE armor there. Incredible. No kidding. I mean, tag team, that other armor stood no chance. I do want to point out, it looks like Ryan has um, OP hopped because now he is running with an MP40 on a full six-man squad. That is true. He did it so quick, none of us even noticed. Yeah, I was watching Troki engage that tank. <laughs> this looks like it looks like they've good. almost secured that cap there. Yeah, yeah, it's game. Yep. Yep, looking at Merc's map, they have no one close. That is game. Wow. GG's to both teams. Yeah, absolutely. Phenomenal game. With what, 10 minutes left? What a way to Just start about. off, TPL. Yeah. Well, at least to start off this this uh, this season. I mean, I know that there were some TPL games that have started already, but I mean, a week one matchup between HLLE and Merc, you can't ask for anything better. No, that was pretty spicy. Start to finish. Yeah, what a match that we got to witness there. Um, two of the, the both of these teams are going to make it very, very far in this uh, this season. So getting to see them so early against each other is a real, real pleasure. So um, looking at this match, HLE had uh, pretty much close to domination for for most of this match. You know, from from the very beginning, being able to capture dugout. Um, nearly uncontested obviously uh, a little bit more of an advantageous uh, point for them but still the execution to get it done really is is what it's all about in the end so commiser co commiserations to Merck uh, on the loss there but uh, I mean you know that they're still a formidable team and, and anyone should take uh, playing them very very uh, seriously.
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think this is going to knock um, Merck's confidence off going on farther into TPL. Um, they still played very well against HLLE. Honestly, I think that game could have gone either way. Um, but, you know, hats off to HLLE for a pretty commanding victory. Um, I wonder if the slow start that Merck had all the way back at the beginning of the game uh, you know, if they were able to push as quickly as HLLE did, I wonder if, you know, that initial cap on mid could have gone differently and that could have potentially changed the whole outcome of the game. You know, I was just going to say something on that. Um, if Merck had had the uh, ability to move to that midpoint and secure that cap first, it, it probably would have been an entirely different game. Uh, because that mid cap is everything. Once you set up on that mid cap, you are setting up a strength um, that that will carry through the rest of the game. And it, it's something that I know Merck is going to clean up. It's definitely something that they're going to be uh, self reflecting on, and you know, coming out strong next week. Now, I bet the next Merck match we see is going to be flawless start. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and obviously there was some some drama to get the um, uh, with getting the match started with all the glitches that were going on. So I'm sure the the re the rematch will be under better circumstances as well, where maybe you're not having all of that anxiety right before the match, where you need to uh, sort the game out and then play a very very difficult match. So um, which and let's be honest, the stress of that probably contributed a little bit to not having a cohesive start. You know. Is, is everybody okay? Are we good to go? Oh crap, we've started. Let's go. The uh, hump actually just sent me over some, some data about this this uh, map, map with the factions. He sent me that between PC and console, this map has come up 41 times that, that he's charted with allies winning 12 and Germans winning 29%. So that makes the US win rate uh, 29%. So uh, in... As if you just look at it strictly with console, he's charted out 25 of these matches, and the U.S. win rate is 28%. So uh, pretty much the same. It was uh, it's you're definitely on the on the worst side of things as the allies, but I think Merck did play amazingly considering uh, you know that being the case. Is there any map where allies have a positive win rate? I know uh, Hump is going to be joining us here in maybe just a moment. He will know for certain. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm also interested to know that. It always seems like it's, uh, it's, against, um, it's against the allies. Actually, where he, yeah. just, he just came in. So, um, Hump, I got a question for you. Are there any maps? We were just talking about the, uh, the analytic standpoint of win rates. Um, are there any maps where allies have a positive win rate? Also, very sorry for your loss. Um, this, that, was, that was a tough one. <laughs> I came straight in, winners, didn't you? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there is. I mean, I think when they, the, the end of the season we've done a, an analysis, I think the overall uh, number for allies and access was actually almost 50-50 for win rate. Um, I'll just pull up my numbers here, but um, yeah, I mean, SME's 46-54 for the Germans, Utah's 52-48 win rate overall, you know, there's, there's some that are close, Hurtgen as well, surprisingly, uh, and Foy, believe it or not, has a 50-50 win rate over 28 games, competitively, so um, yeah, there's definitely games that are, uh, but there's 100% uh, outliers. On uh, different points, but I, I did send that to Caparzo jokingly. I, I I'll <laughs> give full props to HLE. They they had this there, even though I fucking hate dugout. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's exactly what Awake was saying before we started the match. I was telling him exactly what you were telling me about that you wanted on the record that if it's dugout, we're fucked. So uh, I, <laughs> I did let everyone know that. So you were covered from the very start before it even was dugout. But Awake was saying that he really does not like dugout either. So uh, two like-minded fellows right there. Point's just awful. It's just an awful point from either yeah, it's team. Not, it's, it's not, not, not good, is it? There's such a large open area on the left. But I suppose on the flip side, HLE have that uh, to deal with as well. But 
once you get entrenched up that left side, it's difficult for the Allies to, to fight uh, down it towards you once, once you get in. But um, it was a good scrap. I think they had a poor start. I mean, I was locked out of Commander for the first two minutes or so because I was locked at level one. So you oh. can't take it until you're level 30. But um, yeah, it was... Speaking scrap. of the start, I was going to ask a, a bit of a tough question. We saw from our perspective, we saw that there was a truck that kind of had a, a bit of a delay, not much, uh, maybe five to ten second delay uh, right at the beginning of the match. But how how much do you think that five to ten second delay uh, impacted your ability to take that center point dugout? Oh, massively. I think the comms were on that. If you could have heard them, with why there's so many people walking from there. I think it got stuck just at uh, the gardens area. That wasn't part of the plan, um, but uh, yeah, it had a massive impact. But um, midpoint can usually be contested for for a good while on over dugout. Um, it's pretty evenly spaced in terms of uh, time for both teams to get there and start putting pressure on. But um, yeah, it's all these micro battles that you have, and if you lose them, they all have an effect on the overall outcome. So I'll agree with you an extent. It would have had a, a, a an outcome on it, but probably not the complete. Uh, deciding factor on our midpoint loss we, we we had a couple of errors on our side that definitely were not in the pre-match plan well speaking of micro battles we definitely saw quite a few of those micro battles you're speaking of happen right at the gardens area how how important was the gardens for for merc um like in your game plan to to retake the the dugout and try to establish yourself back as the as the top dog well, Gardens was the number one priority for our side to take and hold, because Gardens is your launching off point uh, up onto the high ground at Hockey Stick, or Tankers Hill as they'll call it, and down onto five points and then through onto where the push carries will be. So holding that complete eastern flank for both dugout and then western, it'll be west if you have AA network, it's, it's critical. So we had that marked as the number one area we want to hold, even if it was Pierre's farm, we think that uh, that high point there at five at the hockey stick area on Tankers Hill would have been critical. So across the three points, we, we had that as our, our number one priority and props to HLE, they pushed us out of there, with, uh, you know, within probably 30 minutes or so, we lost the battle there. What would you say, uh, Hump, if you, like, you know, isolating the game down to its few base moments is did you did you feel like you had an opportunity post uh the mid cap going the way that it did to kind of get something started uh like you mentioned like hle had such control over that tankers hill on uh you know by hockey sticks over where where we're pinging here on the map so outside of that did was there any like plan of let's recapture the map edge like let's try to do something wider or, or you know, I, I know this map, like, I have the same sort of opinion as you, but like, was there any sort of plan B there? No, once we lost mid and we had cattle sheds, we kept pretty light on cattle sheds for a while and they eventually just kind of walked in over us because we left it um, un, unmanned for a longer period of time than we should have. Uh, we kept trying to focus about 10-20% of our manpower on the left side and majority of it on, on the tanker cell side. Uh, and then they just kind of eventually, literally walked in through the, the bottom point. That pan first seemed to be the, um, the point in which they, they gained all the momentum and cleared out our OPs. But even even before that, they had probing attacks on that northeast side of the uh, the high ground on the uh, the radar station, and they just kind of started getting in towards us. Um, they started to smother us um, after a, a duration of yeah. time. It's all, it's all a bit of a mush, um, a mush at the minute. It's, um, Still pretty raw. <laughs> no, you're, you're all good, Hump. I really appreciate you joining us. Um, you know, and breaking out that that down. It's uh, it's always nice to hear from your perspective. And you know, obviously, you, you're uh, a student of the game and a and uh, a very good player. So always great to get your perspective. Um, you can go and uh, get, do your post match debrief or, or, or you know smoke four cigarettes or whatever you, you need to do after <laughs> <laughs> these matches to kind of get back to equilibrium. I know it's uh, it's always tough. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, props to HLE though. Um, they uh, are always a great team to play and we really wanted to beat them today, but we uh, didn't come out with the W, so uh, we still got plenty to play for uh, for the season. That was game one, so we'll see what the rest of the season upholds for us. And uh, yeah, we just threw the dice at the end at Barn. 17 minutes to go and we're All like, right. right, let's go. Airhead bombing run, which uh, also came in coincidentally at the same time as theirs. So <laughs> good game all right. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, Hump. We really appreciate you.
Peace, guys. All the best. Take care. See you later. So, everyone else, uh, last sorts of uh, comments, uh, takeaways from the game. Looking forward, uh, I'll, I'll look at the, the schedule here, but, um, you know, these two teams in a very, very difficult division. So, uh, it looks like in round two, Merck will be playing 9 May, and uh, HLE will be playing the 21st. So, a uh, little bit different matchups for round two, but Merck, I'm sure, will be looking to get right and to recover against 9 May, and uh, HLE, I'm sure they want to keep the train rolling uh, against 21st. So, still two great matchups uh, round two in the Atlantic division, but uh, everyone else, what, uh, what, are, what are your takeaways from today? Um, I, I, I think, I think Merck's start there at the beginning had a huge impact on being able to cap mid first. I think both teams played very, very well. Um, I was really happy to see how well HLLE was able to keep their tanks up and their armor coordination there at the end. Um, but I think both teams are going to be fine. Um, I'm going to give both of them wins for next week um all the momentum especially in a very tough division like you said all the momentum that they can carry week to week is going to be huge um especially when you're going to start and playing teams like taco and the sixth and legion like you're going to need all the momentum you can leading up to those games Wait, well, uh... honestly, we knew that this was going to be a spicy match i mean these are two well well established teams that are coming powerhouses that are coming in first week of the season both trying to um, establish basically the tempo for their own team for the rest of the season they both came in i, I know that we saw um, a, a couple of things happen on both sides really but I i'm gonna say that both of these teams really showed a, a strong playing and showed some some significant strategic plays uh, that i think will benefit both of them for the rest of the season. Unfortunately, only one team can come away with a victory, uh, but with with as well as Merck held off the onslaught that was happening from HLLE, especially after their bit of a fumbled start, I, th I think it really does go to show how strong of a team that Merck is. Uh, they did not just roll over and give up the rest of the points when they lost it. They turtled, they tried to come back. Unfortunately, they were not able to, but they certainly did not. Uh, it wasn't for a lack of trying. Yeah, I was going to kind of comment on their opener. I think we just saw, like, obviously Merck had a pretty rough opener. I think that just shows the importance of the first, like, five minutes of a game, ten minutes of a game. Because without that initial cap pressure, HLE basically got a free cap. And I think with the other teams that are watching, they're like, oh, like, playing against, you know, a equally level or if not better team, like, they're probably going to prepare their openers more. So I think... Just, you know, that little demonstration that Merck, unfortunately, had to show um, is kind of like a lesson for, like, all the teams that, like, you know, the opening Absolutely. five minutes do matter a lot in Absolutely. these kind of games. How many of the teams uh, go, you know, oh, it's just the opening. We don't need to practice that because it's so simple. You drive a truck to the point. Uh, but I think this, like you said, it this does open the eyes. Like, you do need to practice. You do need to have a plan in place for this opening so that you can come in and, and establish that strong front line. Yeah, I think uh, looking forward, these two teams are definitely going to be playing again. Uh, I, I don't see any way that they don't make it to the playoffs. Uh, you know, incredible teams that have always made the playoffs in our league. So uh, commiserations to Merck on... A, a difficult loss and congratulations to HLE starting off their season with a W. Um, hopefully we'll be back here with the uh, TPL stream for in the next couple of weeks as we identify our next matchup. Uh, so stay tuned for an announcement um, in the TPL Discord around that. Uh, I want to thank you all the viewers for kind of bearing with us while we dealt with some of that uh, uh, technical issues that we had or rather the hell at loose technical issues where the server was not loading right away. So appreciate you sticking around. Um, thank you to our streamers, uh, Trokey, Ryan, and House. Uh, couldn't do it without you. Thank you to my co-commentators, uh, Winners, Awake, and Herc for joining us. We really appreciate you, you jumping in and uh, you know joining the party. And uh, finally, thanks for bearing with us with the some of the audio issues. We got it corrected about halfway through and we'll make sure that for the next time that uh, is not the case. So. 
Thank you all so much. We will see you in just a couple weeks with the next iteration of the TPL stream. Take care, everyone. Mm.